Martin, the great project of science is to find the fundamental laws. Now, most people think this refers just to the bedrock, to physics and the theory of everything. Let's, let's begin to explore what we mean by that. How do we look for fundamental laws? Well, I think every science has its laws and gives explanations on its level of complexity. There are laws of uh, biology, laws of chemistry, etc. But it is certainly true that uh, if you go on asking questions, then everything does lead you down to uh, uh, physics, uh, because uh, even though we can't solve Schrodinger's equation for anything as complicated as a DNA molecule fully, and certainly not for any organism, we believe that we are all solutions of that equation. And so the fundamental laws are the laws of physics. But we have to ask how deep we have to go to get to the real bedrock. Uh, the conventional view um, until, say, 20 years ago, was that uh, um, the laws determining the strength of the forces and the elementary particles, etc., were laws that we could seek and perhaps have a single equation which described the unification of the four basic forces of nature. An extension of the so-called standard model. That's right, an extension of the standard model to perhaps include gravity. Yeah. And this is sometimes called the final theory, sometimes misleadingly called the theory of everything. The latter is a misleading term sure. because, uh, of course, this theory is irrelevant to 99% of scientists who are working on complex phenomena. But I think the issue that's come up in the last 20 years is whether the bedrock laws are at a deeper level than we thought because there is now the idea that um, our empty space, which we now know um, is not completely empty, it exerts a force, and has a complex structure, probably at a tiny scale, may not be the only possible vacuum. Indeed, many people talk about huge numbers of possible different vacuum states. And in each of those, there would be particles governed by laws that might not be quite the same as in ours. So a picture which is quite widely believed now is that uh, um, when our Big Bang cooled down, as it were, it ended up uh, governed by the laws which seem to prevail throughout the region we can observe. But these are, in some sense, environmental accidents of how a Big Bang cooled down, and there may be other Big Bangs in some of these scenarios, like eternal inflation, um, in which the laws are different because something happened differently in the cooling down, uh, rather like uh, uh, if you have um, water that uh, cools down and freezes, the pattern on the ice may be somewhat mm. different. Mm. The pattern of snowflakes may be a feature of their environment and how they cool down. And so the key question is, um, are what we've traditionally called the laws of nature the deepest level, or are they just parochial bylaws in our cosmic patch, consequences of some laws which are at a still deeper level and which might apply throughout physical reality, throughout the multiverse? That's a key question for science now. So our universe has what we would try to seek as the so-called theory of everything at the fundamental level of physics. But what we don't know is, is that universal over all that is in multi-universes if, if they do exist, because what you're saying is there may be something even below that. There may be something below that, and we'd like to know which features of uh, our cosmos um, are really features which are universal mm. and which are environmental accidents. Mm. Uh, there's a nice analogy which I think was first given by Paul Davis of snowflakes. Um, uh, if you look at snowflakes, then they have a variety of very different patterns, of course, but they all have hexagonal symmetry. Mm. And that's because the uh, pattern in a snowflake depends on its environmental history, the mm. uh, precise humidity and temperature mm. of the cloud it fell through when it formed. Whereas the hexagonal symmetry is imprinted more deeply because it's a feature of the water molecule. Mm. And so by analogy, there may be some of what we call the laws and constants which are determined by accidents of how a Big Bang cooled down, whereas there might be others which are imprinted at a deeper level and are universal, mm. like the uh, hexagonal feature mm. of snowflakes. Mm. And we don't know which is which, but that I think is the sort of question which physicists are now asking. 
So that's one whole way to look at the question whether the deepest laws in our universe, which ones are indeed universal, which ones may be accidents mm -hmm. vis-a-vis other universes. The other way to look at the question in terms of seeking fundamental laws is what are the kinds of laws on the different levels of the, not just the explanatory nature of science from physics to chemistry to biology to, to uh, uh, sociology and, and, and different systems, but which in principle actually are the case that at each of these different levels there are laws that are indeed fundamental and not reducible to lower levels? Mm. I think any laws are in principle reducible since they are all solutions of Schrodinger's equation. But it, what we want to do in other sciences is not to define universal laws, but to have an explanation of unified phenomena. Uh, let's take an example. Um, the uh, theory of plate tectonics developed here in Cambridge in the 1960s, uh, which uh, gave an understanding of why constants are drifting, why mid-ocean ridges open up, etc. Um, that was an important unifying idea, a great advance in science. But you can't really say that's a universal law. It's a, uh, a discovery which gave us great insight into lots of previously unrelated phenomena. And that is perhaps a better model for the kind of uh, goal which science should aspire to when it's dealing with very complex phenomena, just to get a deeper and more unified explanation linking together phenomena. Uh, physics may not be the right paradigm, because physics, of course, deals with huge numbers of uh, identical atoms, mm -hmm. whereas uh, uh, the real world is much more complicated. So I think something like the theory of plate tectonics is perhaps as good a model for what most scientists aspire to do um, as what physicists do. So physics is, in a sense, an atypical science because its subject matter is so simple. Some philosophers of science would claim that we really can never get at truly fundamental reality. All we can do is make observations, so-called radical empiricists, that we can see regularities, we can make observations, but we can never access the real reality because that is forever um, uh, inaccessible to us. Well, it could be that there are aspects of reality that are beyond our brains. It could be we will never reach the deepest level even of uh, physical laws, the bedrock level of the multiverse. Um, but again, I think this is a case where I don't think philosophers are going to help us. I think this is a subject for physicists.